Hello and welcome to our P&O Arvia vlog series. In this episode, there's shocks and surprises at breakfast. There's confusion at disembarkation in Lanzarote. We go on a sun lounger treasure hunt on Arvia. And be sure to watch until the end to find out why we have words in the main theatre and we collide in the Limelight Club. Well, hello and welcome to sunny Lanzarote. Yep, it's absolutely beautiful day today and uh, we're quite excited because we've never been to Arrecife in Lanzarote before. No, it's another uh, Canarian town to explore and we're really looking forward to it. So for breakfast, uh, we actually went down to the Sixth Street Diner. Yeah, as we've said before, it's one of our favourite places so far. And today I had pancakes, but this time with blueberries. And I opted to go for the chicken and waffles. A little bit different. It was like having KFC for breakfast. So it's a savoury waffle with fried chicken. Yeah, just it was nice. Just very, very strange, I think. Would I have it again? I don't think so. I might eat it for brunch or lunch, but not first thing in the morning. But I had to try it because I've never had it before. Yeah, it was very, very strange, wasn't it? To have as a breakfast, to have a like a piece of KFC chicken. But um, interesting. Yeah. interesting. We, we like the Sixth Street Diner. Uh, they have proper mugs of coffee. Yeah. And uh, the coffee in there is really, really good. Yesterday we couldn't get in because of the drill. No. Uh, but today we, we, we were lucky enough to uh, get a seat and uh, enjoy quite a nice little breakfast in there. It is, it's just something a little bit fun and a little bit different, I think. Yeah, and it, it was, it's quite a relaxed atmosphere in there as well, isn't it? So we really enjoy it. After our breakfast in the Sixth Street Diner, we headed straight off the ship um, to catch the coach transfer um, or shuttle transfer into um, Arecife itself. Yep, so this is uh, a shuttle bus that P&O had put on for passengers and if you had a select fare, it was free. Uh, whereas if you'd opted for a saver fare when you booked your cruise, you'd have to pay £4 for an adult and £2 for a child each way. Yeah, so there is quite a big difference in there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, there is. It's um, probably walkable, but it would take you probably about 45 minutes to walk into Arecife from where we were docked anyway. So Yeah, because um, Ada Nova was uh, here today with us as well, and they got prime spot right in, in the centre, really, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, a couple of our fellow passengers sort of had been to Arecife before and parked where Ada had been parked today uh, and thought that they could walk it. And uh, yeah, they uh, <laughs> didn't really appreciate the 45 minute no, walk. No, it is, a, it is a little bit of a walk. But um, apparently a lot of our fellow passengers knew that it was a bit of a walk because there were huge queues. Once again, the buzzword on this cruise has been queues, queues. really. Um, there were huge queues to get on the shuttle transfer. Huge queues to get off the ship. To get off the ship, yeah. The ramp off the ship down into port was quite steep, so it was taking a, um, a long time to get passengers disembarked, really. Yeah. So, uh, in P and O's wisdom, they decided to uh, allow us to disembark from deck four, um, which meant that the ramp was quite steep. Mm. Uh, which was quite interesting and the queue was just phenomenal really even to uh, get on the shuttle bus while we were in the queue for the shuttle bus they then made an announcement over the ship Tanoi that they were going to stop disembarkation and move the ramp from four to three I don't know why anybody didn't think of that in the first place no strange well we were waiting for the coach suddenly I think they sorted something out because a few more coaches arrived and the queue went down reasonably quickly didn't it so it, it wasn't did. too bad and um, once we were on the coach um it was five ten minute drive really and then we were in the um, the main port area of arecife the main port area of arecife is quite nice it's got lots of little cafes and shops and today there was a little market wasn't there with lots of stalls lined around it was really nice little christmas market um going on very very busy because uh, as we said there was Arvia in as well as uh, Ada. Along the uh, marina, a um, few different shops, lots of leather goods and things weren't being sold and you could really smell that leathery smell, couldn't you, as we walked around. 
And it was quite interesting because uh, even though it was around about 25 degrees, the sun was shining, uh, there was a little man playing Christmas songs. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite strange, isn't it, when you're in the warm weather hearing uh, Christmas songs. So from there, we then had a walk into the main town itself. Yep, so we just basically followed the signs for the centre of our Recife, uh, walked past some little cafes uh, and uh, a pond, which was quite interesting. Uh, again, it was really, really hot. The sun was absolutely beating down, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but a very nice little area. It is a pretty port area, really, isn't it? With a nice little marina area. It is quite pretty, but... In the main town centre itself, it's pretty similar to all the other Canarian islands. There's not a lot of anything exciting to there. Apart from one attraction, which we went to go and see. It was right on the waterfront, based in an old fort in Arecife. Um, and it was the like a little museum, wasn't it? Yeah, a little museum and the history of uh, Lanzarote and Arecife, how it became the capital. It was free for us to go in. There was no no charge no. Uh, for entry. Uh, only reason being was somebody had broken into it and um, stolen or broke their cash systems. Yeah. So um, unfortunately, well, fortunately for us, we didn't have to pay. Yeah, unfortunately for them. Mm. But when we got in there, there was really interesting exhibitions and um, different things to see about the history of the island, how it used to be connected to Fuerteventura and how... The capital has moved from one area to now Arecife. And also there's a mummy in the museum itself, so that was really interesting to see. As well as being able to visit inside the museum, you can also get right up on top of the museum where you can get some great views of Arecife. Yeah, no, some really, really beautiful views of the whole town and the port area as well. Right, so after that, after our workout touring the museum and a bit of a history and culture, we then decided we'd head over to find a little cafe and have a little drink. As we were walking along the shorefront, we noticed that there was a really good uh, Christmas display. Yes, it's like a little miniature version of Lanzarote, really, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> and uh, uh, quite an interesting spin on the nativity and Lanzarote. Yes, they had a smoking volcano in there. They had some little animatronic little miniature figures, didn't they? <laughs> Doing all the things. It was really nice to see a little um, water feature in there as well. So lots and lots going on. Nice little attraction. To, um, took about five minutes just to walk around, but it was good to see. We then made our way across the road and there was this lovely little bar and tapas area. Mm. It was really, really popular because uh, it was quite hard for us to get a seat, but we, we managed. Yeah. Uh, the place was full. Service was a little bit slow, but uh, it was beautiful to sit there in the sun and have a beer and a... A Tinto de Verano I had. Mm, it was yeah. very, very nice and very cheap. Very cheap once again. Great, great uh, value in the Canary Islands, oh, yeah. isn't it? You can pick up some... Uh, good drinks for low prices. After sitting, uh, sunning ourselves with a, a drink, we then decided to make our way back to Arvia. Arecife, like we said, isn't that big in no. terms, you know, if you compare it to other major towns uh, in the Canaries. Uh, so it was a, a nice sort of brief stroll uh, and just to have a look really. We got back to the main port area and again there was a small little queue, nothing major. No major queues this time, no. it only took us about 5-10 minutes to do, and we were on, on the shuttle heading back, back to, the, to ship. the ship. When we got back to the ship we headed straight up uh, to the buffet uh, where we had our lunch. So today I had chicken and chips. Yep, um, I had chicken and chips and also some sausages and some gravy and it was absolutely lovely really. Yeah, really, just a little snack. S yeah, really a little nice. simple lunch, nothing too major. It was quite busy in there but again the, the Horizon Buffet on board is a, a large space and we've never had any problems trying to find somewhere to sit. After our quick lunch in the buffet we then headed up on deck to find um, a couple of sun loungers and chill out for the afternoon. It did take us a little while, didn't it, to find um, a couple of sun loungers. The after area of the ship, where the infinity pools are, are very busy, aren't they, on a sunny day? Um, and they, it does feel like you are quite tight together there. So we headed right to the front of the ship, to the beachcomber area, and found two sunbeds there, much, much quieter. 
and we had a lovely afternoon just chilling out enjoying the sunshine there yeah it was quite interesting as we were walking through the ship just to see how Arvia copes with the sunshine you know yeah. she's marketed as the sunshine ship and yeah there's loads and loads of sunbeds up on the the, the main deck you've obviously got the sky dome mm -hmm. area as well but the majority of uh, the sky dome is seating. seating seating rather than lounges isn't it so yeah. It's not ideal for sunbathing and relaxing. It's great if you want to, if you've got kids and you want to watch the kids in the pool, or if you want to be quite active, that's a great place to be. But if you want to just lie down and relax, probably not the best area. After a couple of hours uh, sunbathing, enjoying a few cocktails at the, the front of the ship, um, it was time to basically get ready for the evening. Yep, so this evening we have got the exciting um, Matt Cardle in the Limelight Club. Yeah, this is the first time we've ever been to the Limelight Club. We've obviously heard lots and lots and lots of good things about it and we we're both really excited, not just for the entertainment in terms of the Limelights who perform there uh, and Matt Cardle, but also the food. We arrived there with about half an hour before showtime, didn't we? And good job we did. And it is a very good job we did because there was already a, quite a big queue waiting to get in there. So the top tip is get there as early as you can because if you want seats nearer the front, the best positions, then you need to be there early. Otherwise, you are sat quite, quite at the back out of the way, aren't you, if you're there late? They like to fill you from the front backwards because yeah. it's quite an intimate venue yeah so the, the earlier you get there the more chance you will have to sit right at the front and uh, we were very lucky because we got absolutely prime spot prime spot right near the middle at the front really enjoyed didn't we we did um so first of all when you get into the show you um have an introduction by your hostess the hostess on this occasion is emily who is the lead singer in the limelight band um, she gave us an introduction and overview of what the meal and the entertainment would consist of, which would be, um, we'd have a starter and our main. We'd have um, an interval where the limelights would perform a few songs. Um, then we'd have our dessert and then Matt Cardell would come on. So on to the food then. To start, they gave us uh, a little pastry filled with uh, vegetables, which was really, really nice. Yeah, very tasty, very unusual, but um, really, really enjoyed it. Really did enjoy it. For our starters, we both chose the chicken and garlic presse. Yes. So when it came, it didn't look that impressive, did no, it? it didn't. But when we actually ate it, it was really, really tasty. Much, much, much better than it looked. Yeah. So really, really enjoyed that. It was a cold starter. Yeah. And essentially, it was just chicken and garlic. Um, mashed up and pressed together <laughs> hence the word presse yeah but uh you're not really selling it are you no but it was it, nice it didn't look impressive but it tasted really nice for our mains then we both decided to have the black angus beef mm, and it was great it was delicious really really nice cooked how we like it really um if you like it well done Please mention that to your waiter because it's definitely not well done, is no. it? Um, it is probably medium rare, I would say, in how it was cooked. So if you like it well done, please let your waiter know because they didn't ask us how we wanted no, it cooked. No, they didn't. Um, so that could make or break the meal for you. But it was absolutely delicious. Um, and then on to desserts. Desserts is where we did differ. The only time we did differ in this meal where I had the chocolate brownie. Uh, my brownie was superb, but I, as I've said many, many times, I love anything chocolatey, so it was a winner for me. And I had the Bellini Panna Cotta. Mine was a little bit different. It looked a little bit like jelly, uh, but it was absolutely delicious. And it came with a little bit of peanut brittle. Oh yeah, you like that? Oh, it was beautiful and just it was quite light and refreshing. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, like your brownie was quite stodgy. Um, and heavy, yeah, as a brownie is supposed to be. Uh, but this was really light, really fruity, really refreshing. I really enjoyed it. And then, um, after we'd seen 
the limelight before and Emily and the band in the limelight are superb aren't they they are, they are good. really good we we went in the other night didn't we just to, to watch them perform yeah yeah it was time for Matt Cardell so Matt Cardell did um an acoustic set um just him and his guitar and it was fantastic yeah. really really enjoyed it it was great that he was able to talk about some of his life, how he got on on The X Factor, what happened after The X Factor, some of his troubles that he's had in his life. Really, really good little set, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He was on altogether about 45 minutes, but it was a great set. Really enjoyed it. To be honest with you, the songs that he sang weren't really many songs that he was known for. No. He did sing his X Factor's winner song, but the majority of songs that he did sing were ones that he'd handpicked and one of, and his favourite songs from other artists. Um, and he, he was absolutely incredible, very, very talented and uh, such a beautiful voice. Okay, so after Matt Cardell, that was not the end of our night of celebrity singers because we then dashed off to the main theatre because tonight we were going to see... Ronan Keating. And what a show Ronan put on. So first of all, the theatre was packed. We're so glad we dashed to the theatre because if we would have left it, because originally we had planned to have a drink in between, but if we would have done that, there'd be no way we were getting a seat. It was, I think every seat was full, wasn't it, in the theatre? Uh, usually throughout the, the last few days, the later show at 10.30 has been a little bit quieter. Mm -hmm. But today it was standing room only, wasn't it? Yeah. Every seat was taken for Ronan. It was. And what a show he put on. It was incredible. Um, all the classics, so some Ronan songs and some boys' own songs. He had people clapping, dancing, singing. He jumped off the stage and ran, ran. around. It, he was so good. Really, really good. I think it was one of the best shows we've seen, yeah. isn't it? So um, if you were a boys' own fan, you would have loved it. If you're a Ronan fan, you would have loved it. If you're not a fan of either of them, I still think you would have loved it. It was just a great, great really show. Really good show. Uh, and even at the end, everybody was on their feet dancing to his last song. Yeah. Including us. And we tend not to do that. <laughs> we loved it though, didn't we? It was so good. Really good. And that still wasn't the end of our night's entertainment, was it? No. We made our way up to the Sky Dome for a Freddie Mercury tribute act performed by... Josh Henderson. And once again, superb performance. Incredible. As we've talked about, the acoustics in the Sky Dome aren't the best, but he definitely didn't let that affect him at all. And once again, great audience participation. He had people shouting for an encore. Again, really, really good show again, yeah, really wasn't it? Really enjoyed it. And the Sky Dome can be a bit hit and miss with how it feels, isn't yeah. it? How it's set up. You're not all so close together, are no. you? When you're in the top level, it does feel quite sparse with people, but really, really good again. After watching uh, Josh Henderson as Freddie Mercury, uh, we basically, it was the, the end of our evening. We were absolutely shattered. <laughs> we were shattered. We so had tired. a full on day and a packed evening of entertainment. And we were so full from yeah. uh, the limelight um, that we didn't go to the buffet. We just uh, headed straight to bed. Straight to bed and that was it. Uh, thanks for watching our day in Arecife and Lanzarote. If you've got any comments or questions, just pop them in the box below and we'll get back to you. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more content available on our YouTube channel, so press that subscribe button. If you're interested in receiving daily updates, we're available on most social media platforms. Just search for Tom and Dom Travel.